Back is made perfect. All right. Well, welcome back, everybody. Our next guest, she started writing at a very young age. While perfecting her craft, she started a career covering local events in Orlando. And shortly after, she got picked up by This Is R&B, where she earned her way from weekly contributor to managing editor all the way to the top. And she, I mean, that's that's really mm -hmm. impressive. And, this, and she focuses on everything lifestyle. Mm -hmm. So joining us to tell us more, we welcome creative lifestyle expert Nikizia Panetta. <laughs> Thanks so much for joining us. Thank Welcome you to guys. the show. Yeah, Happy here all the so way from much. Orlando. Yes. Thanks for driving up to see us today in this rain. <laughs> of course. <Yeah. laughs> it was rough. No, so the check's a pretty big deal. You do it Yeah, it is. Yeah. <laughs> well, so tell us, tell us, what is This Is R&B for people who are unfamiliar with it? Yeah, for sure. So This Is R&B.com is like the premier spot for R&B music. We won a Soul Train Award in 2013. Wow. And have worked with some amazing artists. We've created content with them. We've broke a lot of artists. Um, Let's say August Alsina, mm -hmm. he got a lot of push from us, and that's how he got really big. Seven Streeter, um, anybody that kind of started, kind of started with us. So it's been an amazing run for us so far. So you You're a contributor everyone. on other sites. Tell us about those and what they are. Yes, yeah, so I am a freelancer with Essence Magazine. Um, also Essence, legendary Essence <laughs> yeah, Magazine. Legendary. You can't just start <laughs> by that. Yeah. <laughs> Come on now, legendary. African American yes. legendary magazine Essence. Yes, and yeah. it's been incredible doing that. I go to Essence Festival every year. Isn't it wonderful? So, oh, it's so fun. Mm. Hopefully, you guys will be there this year. Uh, Road trip. <laughs> <laughs> um, I also uh, have freelance for uh, Team Vogue, and I write for a site called Romper.com. Wow. So even though you have a blog, mm -hmm. I mean, you call yourself a writer. Yes. So what would be the difference between those two things? So for or me, is there really a difference? For me personally, I do think there is a difference. For other people, they kind of look at it like, okay, it's just a writing altogether. But I honestly look at blogging being kind of like a, a something that you enjoy doing, and it's just kind of like something that you pick up. And it's not to say that people who have blogs don't know what they're talking about, mm -hmm. but for me, writing covers more than just sitting in front of my com computer and doing this just because it's fun. I do this literally for a living. I've written a children's book. I've done this my whole life. Mm -hmm. So for me, it's not that I think I'm better, you know, but right. I just, it, to it's me, okay it's just something do. that I... <laughs> it is. If you don't think that way of yourself, who will? You're right. You're mm -hmm. absolutely right. Mm -hmm. And um, But you started as a writer before you had the blog. Yes. Okay. The blog just kind of came because people told me that they would like to see, because I've been through like a lot of things and there was one point where I went through a, a brief period of depression. So mm -hmm. during that time, a lot of people found that hearing my testimony was mm -hmm. something that they would enjoy seeing constantly. So I write a lot about my inspiration and the things that I went through when I was really depressed when I transitioned mm -hmm. from Orlando to Atlanta. So is it strictly about depression and the issues that you went through or is it about various things? So it's we about various it things. There. Yeah, it's about various things. It's just I like to speak about inspiration a lot um, mm -hmm. and just kind of touch on Anything that people could find, kind of relate to, I feel like the biggest thing when you're writing is to make sure that you're relatable and transparent. And that's one of the biggest things about going through things. A lot of people hide what they went yes. through because they don't want people to judge them. But I feel like, especially as a writer, it's my job and my duty to let people know, like, hey, you're not alone. Mm -hmm. Well, people relate to realness. Yes. Mm -hmm. That's Was it hard to go from writing about other people and celebrities, for instance, and then doing things like writing about yourself in a blog and what you're going through. D did, yeah. it, did it take a while to be like, okay, let me, I'm talking about me now. For three years, I tried to launch that blog. Three years, mm -hmm. consistently tried to launch the blog, and I just couldn't do it because I didn't want people to judge me, I guess, because I was going through things that m my family didn't even know that I was experiencing. Mm -hmm. So it was kind of hard for me to say, hey, I'm going to put this all out for people to see, but... Eventually, I just said, you know what, it's either tell people or keep it in and then somebody else suffer from the same feelings that you have, whether that's, you know, feeling like they're not good enough, feeling like they're trying to get their career going and it's not happening. So for me, it was literally just like, you need to help others, mm -hmm. so this is your job. Well, it's people like you that when you choose to be brave enough to have that voice, other people go, oh, she's just like me, I can mm -hmm. speak out too. So you started writing, as we mentioned, at a very early age. Mm -hmm. How did you know that this is what you wanted to do? There are so many people, <laughs> and I'm sure you can relate to this, there are so many people that's still in that phase of life with, I don't know what I want to be when I grow up. <laughs> and they could be 40, 50 years old. Yeah. So how did you know that this was the it? I didn't. 
So I went to UCF, uh, go Knights. I went to UCF for my undergrad and I actually majored, double majored in psychology and criminal justice. Wow. wow. So very far away from yeah. right. <laughs> Too bad you can't get a refund on that education, <laughs> no, my girl. Whole thing. Oh my gosh. <laughs> um, but I, you know, writing has always been a passion of mine and I've loved it so much. My mom said that when I was like three or four, I learned how to read full books. So wow. it's been something that I love to read. I love to write. Mm. I love those things. So for me, it was like, you're going to spend your whole life doing something that you absolutely do not want to do right. or you can literally just step out on faith and mm -hmm. like leap out and say let me just give it a try and if it doesn't work out or if I wake up tomorrow and I decide hey I don't want to do this anymore I still have time to start over and I think that that's something that people always have to mem remember it's never too late to start mm -hmm. over mm -hmm. what was your one first writing job yeah <sighs> After high school, because I was the sports editor of my yearbook, Okay. after that, I think I did like small things and then I, I wrote for this magazine in Orlando called Brink Magazine. Okay. And then I started off with Culture Climax, which is where I started doing red carpets and interviewing like local artists. And I did a wide coverage of the 2012 All-Star Weekend. So that was like the biggest oh, thing yeah. for me. I was like, oh my gosh, I got to go to this, to all of this stuff. And I did... Um, the red carpet for Think Like a Man oh. in Orlando. Oh, wow. Yeah. Just a little film. Just, just a little film. Yeah. So, Did you, you know, meet Kevin Hart? I, he was not there, but oh. um, Lala was yep. there, Fab mm. and Emily B were mm -hmm. there, and a few other people. It was so long ago, I can't remember. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I, I started there, and then This Is R&B took a chance on me. I tell my editor all the time, I said, I don't know why you hired me. <laughs> but, <laughs> wow. But I'm so grateful that he did because it turned into something amazing, and I've worked with some great people. Was there ever a story that you didn't want to cover, and you covered it, and you're like, oh, thank God I did that. That was the best. Um... So for a while after I moved to Atlanta, I had anxiety about leaving the house. So there were plenty of things where I was like, oh, I don't want to go to this. I don't want to go to this. But one in particular, it was, I think, the first event I covered when I moved to Atlanta. And it was a Jagged Edge 20-year oh, reunion. I remember J.E. And it was, I was like, I don't want to go to this because I just had anxiety about leaving. And Jacquees, I don't know if you guys are familiar with him, but mm -hmm. he's signed to um, Young uh, Cash Money right now. And he's a really big amongst the younger kids. Mm -hmm. And he was there. And he wasn't signed yet. And I met him and I was like, oh my gosh, he has a great voice. He's an amazing kid. And I'm so thankful that I went because now every time I see him, it's kind of like one of those feelings where I literally saw you start and yep. now. Oh, wow. Yep. So I'm That's glad Blake I was Shelton. Circle, yeah. Yeah. That's wow. Blake Shelton for yeah. me because <laughs> I, you know, his first single when he had the mullet and yeah. they had, and nobody wasn't, <laughs> you know, and yeah, and that's like, so I totally, yeah, yeah. so I yeah. totally get what you're, and it, yeah. you know, it's, it's wonderful to remember yes. those people because yes. like you were there when they were nobody mm -hmm. basically. Mm -hmm. It's such a good feeling. How did you fall into the lifestyle expert job or category? So within the past two years, to be quite honest, I woke up one morning and I said, I want to do something different. Mm -hmm. And I called up my, I called up the station and reached out to the people at West in Orlando. And I don't know how it happened, but I ended up getting my first segment there. And, you know, before then I was doing stuff for Essence and a lot of people would always call on me for music related things and just ask me about different products that I would feature in my write-ups for Essence or whomever else. Mm -hmm. And after that first segment, I'm, I was always a person that said, I like to be behind the scenes. I don't want the lights on me. But after that first segment, I was like, girl, <laughs> girl, when, the lights, when the lights make you look good, love it. I yes. was like, girl, you, can, you got this. So, you know, after that, of course, I still have nerves, but it, it turned into one of these things where it goes back to what I said previously. When you know information, oh, yeah. it's selfish of you and a disservice of you to not share the, those things. So I think it's important that even if it's something that you might not like, you might see something that's based on like beauty products and you might say, well, hey, I know my mom might like this or my sister right. might need this. So for me, it's all about sharing knowledge because that's how we all grow. Well, Nikisha, you're all in lights now. So <laughs> <laughs> all lights are on you. We're gonna take a quick break now, but you're gonna wanna stick around because she's gonna give us a taste of her lifestyle expertise. When we come back, Nikisha Pennell is gonna be sharing some essentials that are off the radar. We'll be right back. You've heard a lot about Everest's healthcare programs. 